Hey guys, how you going? This is Billy Eat World again. Thanks for stopping by and just remember if you like what you see, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, feel free to take a look at some of my other videos if you like. You can find them all in playlists in the description down below. But anyway, for something a bit different in today's video, we're going to take a quick look at the basics of game streaming and how you can do it for free. And by streaming, I don't mean like streaming to Twitch, I mean playing your games remotely on another PC or mobile device. But hang on, why would you want to do that anyway? Well, you see, unlike console gamers, PC gamers usually play sitting down at a desk. And sometimes you just wish you could lounge back on your couch instead, and game streaming is a much easier way to do that than moving your whole PC itself. Before we start though, I should point out that as easy as this sounds, there are some pretty big cons to game streaming because it does involve network connections. And probably the main ones are that in most cases the graphics don't look quite as good and you also may experience a bit of latency. With that being said though, in most cases games will still look as good or better than they would on a console and you can reduce latency by adjusting the stream quality. So all in all, if this still sounds like something you're interested in, then listen up, because like I said, in most cases, it's free to do, and as I'll explain, it's super easy to set up. Now, to kick off to get your streaming setup started, you will need to make sure you have a few things before you start. But the good news is, apart from the gaming PC itself, most of the things on this list are things people tend to have lying around anyway. Most importantly though, you will need to make sure you have a decent router, and by this I mean something that's preferably made in the last few years. Because to get a decent stream going, your router really needs to have gigabit ethernet ports, or if you want to go wireless, it'll need to be capable of 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Once you've checked off your router setup, well the next thing you're going to need is a client PC or a tablet, which is where we're actually going to be playing the games. And this won't need to be anything amazing in terms of specs, so any old device you have lying around should work, as long as it has decent network connections like your router. For example, I've had success streaming to my Mac Mini, my iPad Air, an old 2008 MacBook and even a crappy old Acer Aspire from way back in 2006. But just bear in mind though that even though the specs of the client aren't that important, a super old system will affect the performance, so just try and use the best hardware you have available. Now once you've got your client set up and you know where you're going to be streaming to, the next thing on the list you're probably going to need to think about is a way to control your games. And that's because, well, like I said before, if you're thinking of game streaming in the first place, I'm guessing that's because you don't want to sit at your desk. If you're like most people, then you're probably going to want to be streaming to your living room or somewhere else more comfortable, and generally speaking, that's going to mean a wireless mouse and keyboard, or better yet, a controller, is going to be a far better option than a traditional wired setup. Just to give you an example of how your setup could work, well, in my case, I usually stream to my iPad or my Mac Mini, which is plugged into my living room TV. And both of these platforms bring up some interesting problems because Apple devices don't really work that well natively with most controllers. So in my case for the iPad, I ended up just buying a proper MFI controller, but if you don't want to spend any money, you can just use an on-screen controller. And on the other hand, for my Mac, I just got around the problem altogether by installing Windows on a bootcamp partition, which took a bit of work but didn't cost me a cent. Now, once you've got your control set up and all your other hardware sorted out, you'll be ready to get on to the most important step, which is the streaming software itself. And as far as software goes, there's a few different options, but today I'm just going to run you through Steam and Moonlight, which are the two most common free methods. Steam, obviously, I don't think needs any introduction, but if for some reason you don't already have it, setting it up ready for streaming is as simple as just installing it on both systems. But Moonlight, on the other hand, requires that you have an NVIDIA graphics card because it's basically using NVIDIA's own game stream service to get the job done. So which of these two options is the best? Well, to start with, unless you want to stream to a mobile device, then Steam is probably the easiest option. Like I said, all you have to do is install it on both systems, log in, and as long as both your host and client are on the same network, you'll be able to share your library. Moonlight, on the other hand, is almost as easy to set up, but you will need to pair your two systems before you start and add any games manually that aren't detected by GeForce Experience. 
But with that being said, assuming you do have the hardware to support it, it is probably worth the extra effort because it does have a few more options. And like I said, it also works with mobile devices. So to finish up, assuming for one reason or another neither of these options work for you, then don't worry because there are a few other options you can choose from. Like for example, if you want to stream to a mobile device but you don't have an Nvidia card, then you might want to try out Kino console instead. Also, just say you don't have a tablet or an old PC lying around, then you might also want to consider picking up an Nvidia Shield or Steam's new Steam Link because although these devices will set you back some cash, it is probably going to be cheaper in the long run than it would be to buy an old PC just for streaming. But finally, what do you do if for some reason you've ticked off all the things on this list, you've got everything installed and you still can't get it to work? Well, everyone's setup is obviously going to be different, but a good rule of thumb is just start over from scratch and make sure you have a good network connection. Check to see that your network cables aren't affecting your network speed, or if you're on Wi-Fi, make sure you're nice and close to the router. And if all else fails, reset your router to factory defaults and install a fresh OS on your two devices, because it could be another piece of software or a setting that's interfering with the streaming service. But anyway guys, that just about wraps up this video, so if you like what you see and it helped you out, then make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out the links in the description below if you want to see any more of my videos or if you want to support my channel on Patreon. And until next time, see you later and have a good one.